Right. Well, let's get to that this this big debate, which is ongoing and is about to become even bigger when you all return to work next week. Um, President Biden's infrastructure proposal. Speaker Pelosi has said that she wants to move the bipartisan bill and the overall budget bill at the same time, that $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, in order to keep Democrats unified. You have favored that approach. What is your message to Josh Gottheimer and the centrist Democrats who are uh, trying to force Speaker Pelosi's hand right now to um, to ditch that approach? Well, I'm not certain how many of them are still taking uh, that position after this week and after some calls from the White House and after calls from leadership and after messages that I and others have delivered. I, I think we are coming together. Um, you know, the, the point is the House and, and the majority of the Senate uh, including uh, the committees of jurisdiction, were essentially cut out of this so-called bipartisan deal uh, written by a rump group of senators, uh, self-appointed and endorsed by the White House. Um, and I've pointed to the fact that uh, if we're going to be serious about climate change, they, they left out a lot of key things from the House bill uh, that dealt with climate change, uh, that dealt with resilience, uh, that dealt with reconnecting communities, uh, you know, that dealt with wastewater, drinking water, lead pipes. Uh, and I'm looking for opportunities. We're talking with the Senate, talking with the White House uh, on how we can build those things in reconciliation. But if we were to pass this bill as is, I don't know that we would even see a reconciliation bill come out of the Senate. Uh, I think that we have to hold them both. Uh, you know, the, they're saying, why, why are you in such a hurry for the infrastructure bill? Uh, it doesn't go into effect till October 1st. If we passed it tomorrow, it goes into effect October 1st. If we pass it September 30th, it goes into effect October 1st. Well, actually, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the timing of the passage of BIF and the reconciliation bill, because as, as you just noticed, as you just noted, this all could come to a head by September 30th, because that's when uh, all transportation programs um, that are being funded already by a one-year extension uh, that funding expires. So do you think that the House is going to be able to overcome internal caucus divisions over the reconciliation bill in order to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill in time for uh, before that expiration on September 30th uh, of the funding for transportation programs? Yes, I'm confident uh, we can pull together and do that. I mean, obviously there'll be a key uh, test next week, but I think we're gonna pass that test next week. Uh, and then members will have an opportunity to express their concerns to the various committees of jurisdiction uh, about what goes into the so-called reconciliation, which is essentially the American jobs plan. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, reconciliation is a pretty darn obscure word. We shouldn't use that anymore. Nobody knows what that means. It's the American Jobs Plan. It's the Family Assistance and Tax Cut Act uh, to follow up on the hard infrastructure bill and also to improve the hard infrastructure bill, which the Senate passed earlier. And what are your biggest issues with the bipartisan infrastructure bill right now, parts of it that you would like to see change before final passage? Well, I gave a short list. Um, High-speed right. rail got a uh, short shrift. Uh, uh, the uh, transit section, you know, our transit systems in the United States of America in our major cities and smaller cities have a $108 billion backlog just to come up to a state of good repair, let alone give people new transit options. Uh, their transit funding is very lacking uh, because uh, uh, control over that was given to one senator, a minority senator, Senator Toomey, who hates transit for some reason. And, uh, you know, transit came up very short. Uh, so I want to uh, backfill there, improve there. Those are things that will help with uh, carbon reduction and uh, congestion mitigation. Uh, and then uh, over on the uh, wastewater side, uh, you know, there's massive deficit across the country uh, for wastewater improvements or, or actually new systems or rebuilt systems. Uh, and I had a very robust plan there. Every million we spend on wastewater is 20,000 jobs in America 
Uh, I did an event with Marty Walsh at the Pipe Fitters last week. They're pretty over the moon about the idea of me putting in more money into wastewater to help America's cities. When I was a county commissioner, we get a 75% federal match to build our system. Today, if we were building it, we'd get a zero federal match. Communities can't do all this on their own. Wastewater does not observe city limits, county boundaries, state boundaries, or even international boundaries. Uh, so this is a national problem, needs to be dealt with a partnership with the federal government. So those are some of the key elements. There's also uh, issues that relate uh, to uh, aviation and uh, fuel efficiencies that we can get there that uh, were left out of their bill. Uh, there's some issues regarding ports and, and other things that I wanna deal with.